Ahoy there, pirate fans. Are you having a good day? Did you have a fun day? I sure did. This was an entertaining game to watch. This was fun. It was up and down. But it was by no means perfect. And I'm going to dive into it right now. What is going on, everybody? It is a good Friday indeed. And I am Mac. Back with another video. As always, do me a favor. Like, comment, subscribe, follow on Instagram. Link is down in the box below. So the Pirates win on opening day 6-5 to five over the Miami Marlins. The battle in Buccos, baby. They just never say die. They never quit. They're so resilient. And they will just give you a battle every single time that they're, they find themselves in a hole. And this game is a perfect example of that. So the thing about this is that we don't know everything about the Pirates with this particular team just yet because of all the injuries. But the strengths with this, with, with this lineup and with this team are definitely there. But like I said, it was by no means a perfect game, man. Um, this had everything that you could ask for in in a season opener, man. It had offense. It had some great plays. It had some boneheaded mistakes. It had some wasted opportunities. So with all that being said, I'm just going to get the bad out of the way first because um, there were – genuine moments in this game where I felt like the Pirates had this game lost. And I think it's going to start here with Andy Haynes. For as good as this offense, I know this offense is good. I mean, it's there. This team has shown several times over the course of the past season and a half that they're capable of of rallying from a big deficit because the offense is built that way. But it goes to our hitting coach and Andy Haynes. And this is why he needs to go. His hitting approach just doesn't work. All the wasted opportunities the Pirates had in today's game, I'm surprised the Marlins could only muster five runs. I'm surprised the Pirates were able to put six runs on the board because these stats right here may alarm you. The Buccos went two for 17 with runners in scoring position today or uh, Thursday rather. And they left 13 runners on. That is just, th that cannot happen. Now, granted, I mean, the, the Marlins, in my opinion, are a good team they obviously were good enough to get to the playoffs last year. And I know it's just one game of the season. I'm not overreacting about it. I'm not saying the Pirates are going to do this every single time they play. There's going to be times where, you know, they don't get second chances with opportunities and they lose or they take advantage of these opportunities. But they went 2 for 17 with runners in scoring position and they left 13 on. The main culprits, the sixth inning. You have the bases loaded and nobody out, and you get three straight batters out, mainly O'Neill Cruz and Jared Triolo, just looking at pitches that whiz right by him. And that right there, man, it, it like I said, it just can't happen. Because Andy Haynes' approach is... You have two strikes on you, and anything that's close, you just watch it go by, and you hope that the pitcher walks you. That cannot happen. I mean, you could see it with Jared Triolo's at bat in that inning, where he was hoping that that fastball that was borderline was just going to be called a ball and he'd get on base. That cannot happen. Buccos had another opportunity with the bases loaded. They got one on the board thanks to McCutcheon 
digging it out at first base, which ended up being just an RBI ground out. But Andy Haynes's hitting approach is the reason that this offense can it is honestly not at its full potential just yet, despite the fact that that they're able to come back from these deficits and win these games. But the main, and you know, back to like the the O'Neill Cruz and Jared Triolas, you have back-to-back strikeouts right there too. The Pirates today, the Pirates on Thursday struck out 17 times. I'm not kidding you. They struck out 17 times. Like I said, that cannot happen. You have to take advantage of these opportunities and you have to be aggressive at the plate. You have to have a whole different approach and you have to take what these pitchers are giving you. I know I said that you can't overdo it in my pregame, but there comes a point to where if they're throwing you a pitch that's hittable and it's close to the zone and you're down an account, you got to take a swing at it. If you go down, you have to go down swinging. You can't just watch these pitches whiz by you. This has been a recurring issue ever since Andy Haynes was here. Mitch Keller, I'm not going to get too into him because I don't think he did terrible Thursday, but he certainly didn't do great. I mean, he went five and two-thirds. He allowed five runs. Only four of them were earned, so... You know, I, I'm laying off of him for that reason because only four of them were earned. Jared Triolo just looked really off at second base yesterday because he had that fielding error. He had never had possession of the ball at second base, which resulted in the unearned run. And then he had that terrible rundown in the um, in the uh, top of the 12th inning, which, which I'll get into later. But uh, Mitch Keller, I mean, the reason that I'm laying off of him is because it's only one game. He didn't do awful, but he certainly didn't do great. He did strike out three, but really his velocity was off. His slider looked off, and he really did struggle with the middle of the lineup. He allowed a couple of soft base hits as well. But it's something that I'm not too concerned about. I think he's a good enough pitcher to be able to work on that velocity and he's able to work on, you know, pounding the zone a little bit more. But, you know, I I just kind of expected better from a guy that we extended in the offseason. But like I said, it's only the first game. I'm not going to get too into him with that because the offense bailed him out big time. At least it was a no decision thanks to the offense being able to come to life, and a phenomenal job by the bullpen. If there was one thing the Pirates did great in uh, yesterday's game, by far the bullpen. Fantastic job by the bullpen. Mitch Keller allowed seven base hits. You know how many You know how many base hits the bullpen allowed in six and a third innings of work? One. One base hit total in six and a third innings. And keep in mind, David Bednar was not available for this game, and Colin Holderman was not available for this game. They This bullpen did that without their two most valuable assets with the bullpen. Especially Luis Ortiz and Aroldis Chapman get big shout-outs for yesterday's game. Luis Ortiz fantastic uh, stint yesterday especially with him getting those those uh double plays which is a pitcher's best friend you know the, the pirates no doubt about it need help with that fifth starter now that um Johan Oviedo is going to be out for the season with Tommy John but Luis Ortiz I think you got to keep this guy in the bullpen he did a phenomenal job yesterday Aroldis Chapman took care of business in the tenth in the uh, ninth inning. I think Aroldis Chapman's living up to advertised. Again, it's only one game, but this guy's showing that he still has it with where he is in his career. Great job by those two in particular with the bullpen. And Jose Hernandez finishing up his first major league safe. So 
there were definitely a lot to uh there was definitely a lot of good things as far as the pitching went despite the mediocre in my opinion job that Mitch Keller did but the offense is where this team came to play Brian Reynolds game tying two run homer um really good day for him yesterday as well so Brian Reynolds just needs to keep that up as well Key Brian Hayes, he got on base a couple of times. He walked twice. As a matter of fact, Connor Joe, Andrew McCutcheon, and Henry Davis and Key Brian Hayes all combined for six walks. So it's like the Pirates are getting on base. They're doing these things right, which, yeah, I mean, it's nice that they're getting on base and they're drawing these walks, but that can't be their approach every single time that they take the plate. And again, I think that goes back to Andy Haynes' philosophy. But then you see guys like Edward Olivares, first major league at bat, solo home run to make it a 5-3 to three game. And that was after the Pirates had that bases loaded opportunity. And then how about the man, of, and, and then how about Jared Triolo? You know, sure, he had a sloppy day at second base. He had a little bit of a jittery day at second base, in my opinion. And he had that horrendous rundown in the top of the 12th inning where he did deliver the what would be the game-winning run, but he was in a horrendous rundown in between first and second. Reminded me of Gorky's Hernandez back in the day. It's just a bad rundown. And speaking of rundowns, how are you going to send Henry Davis home with one out in the tenth inning, you can't you, you can't send him there. You can't wave him there. If there were two outs, okay, I get it. But with one out and your runner not being able to be to throw like that, you cannot take that risk right there. And I think the Pirates caught a huge break with the bullpen because I'm telling you that wave to home for Henry Davis. That could easily have lost us the game. You got to know the situation right there. If it's one out, you keep him at third because you can score on an out. If it's two outs, you send him. And I get it. I would get it there. You can't send him on one out right there. But anyway, O'Neill Cruz, great day at the plate for him. He made up for striking out with the bases loaded. Game tying home run off of Sixto. He went oppo in the uh, top of the eighth inning. And when it was all said and done, the Pirates won the game six to five. Valiant effort, great come from behind win, great team effort. And I mean, this team just shows you that they're never truly out of a game. Are there going to be games where the Pirates get blown out? Of course there are. It's baseball. It's a 162 marathon game of a season. Sometimes you run into a buzzsaw. Sometimes you get knocked out. And sometimes you're the one that's dealing that's dealing the blowouts. It's baseball. It happens. But this team, man, I feel so confident if this team's in a deficit, especially with the bullpen that they can come back and win a game. After all, this was pretty much the same team that last year, they were they found themselves down in a 9 nothing deficit to the Reds, and they came all the way back and beat them. This team has so much resilience and so much fight in them, and I know it's only one game. I know it's a long season in baseball, like I said a couple minutes ago. But you got to love the effort that this team puts in. And you got to love the determination that this team has. Are they the most talented team in the league? No, not even close. But more often than not, this team is going to give you an honest effort every single game that they go out there. This is a team that's on a mission to prove that they're a lot better than what people are giving them credit for. A lot of these experts had us fi- have us finishing last place in the NL Central this year. 
Third place, I'll take. I would love, obviously, I'd love a wild card, and I would especially love a division title. October baseball is in my is in my sight with this team. I believe if this team plays all their cards right, and they, you know, slap some cement on these small little thing on these small little bricks that they have, and just patch up the holes they have. Playoff baseball is in my sight with this team. I can understand third place. I can maybe understand fourth place. But this is not a last place team in my opinion. This team is too hard working and they're too determined to be in the basement of the NL Central. And I think this first game of the season should be a tone setter for your season. You're going to give your opponent hell every single game that you go out there. And I'm excited to see how the rest of this series goes, man. We win it 6-5 to five over a tough Marlins team. I'm excited to see Martin Perez take the mound Friday night. I think, I think that that's a guy that a lot of this fan base is overlooking. Martin Perez, like I said in my preview, he I think he was buried in, in the uh, Rangers rotation, but I think this guy secretly could be a very good sleeper for us as far as the rotation goes. But uh, yeah, a, a very good win, a, a great come from behind win today. By these battle and buckos, six to five, we win it over the Reds. Game two, or uh, the the Marlins rather. Game two of this four game set will be Friday night, seven ten first pitch down in Miami, and uh, I hope to have a recap of that game out as well. The weekend's going to be difficult for me. I'm going to be with my uh, girlfriend's family for Easter all weekend, so I hope to have a recap out for Friday night. But uh, yeah. Just want to get this. Um, just want to get this out of the way. What a game by the Pirates, man! And I'm excited to see what happens. Anyway, let me know what you think. Like, comment, subscribe, and uh, let me know what you think down in the comments below. I am Mac. Check it on out for the day. Have a good one, everybody.